good morning and welcome to Lover's Lane United Methodist Church. We are so happy to welcome you to worship this morning. As we prepare for worship, we would like to invite you to take a few steps to connect with our church. Shortly, we will be passing the attendance pads so that you can let us know that you are here. If you want to get a head start, you can use the QR code on the screen. If you are worshiping online with us, please let us know you are here. We would love to greet you. If you are a guest with us today, we hope you will join us right after worship at our guest connection table at the back of the room. We have a special gift for you this morning. Finally, we want the whole world to know about the love of Jesus Christ. So we hope you will share this worship service with your social network. Whether you are in person or online, live or at a later date, please share this service with your friends. Thank you. Good morning, Crosswalk. Good morning, Crosswalk. How are you guys this morning? Hey, everyone got your palm leaves? It's Palm Sunday. All right. Well, welcome. We want to say welcome. Uh, if you're a guest with us, we want to say a special welcome to you. We've got a gift for you in the back. If you're watching online, we want to say good morning to you as well. You guys ready to worship? All right. Well, let's stand up as you are able and let's worship God together. Stand by what he claimed. I live another life to say. It may be midnight or midday. He's never early.
Now, we're not going to let you sit for very long because let me tell you what we're waiting on. We're waiting on our kids to come. Oh, they're, coming in. they're coming in in just a minute. Okay. But we got a lot to tell them. Y'all, it's Holy Week. Look at your neighbor and say, it is Holy Week. Holy Week. Woo. And I want to see those Mama calls. Carol, yeah. we miss you. Mama Carol in the front row. Oh, we love you. Oh, are we ready? All right, here we go. We're ready. Oh, we're ready Our for the kids. Our babies are ready. Okay, Let's well, go, I'll guys. come back then. Get your palms out. <laughs> come on now. Unspeakable joy. So let our friends do all the talking when our words fall Come short. We've got reason to get up, reason to get down. Yeah, he not traded our shame for joy. And now the joy wants out. Happy dance. Hey, yeah, you in the back of the room with those concrete shoes. It's okay to cut loose. It ain't about how you move, but what moves you. We're so consumed with what we think we're supposed to be that we stop living like. See those hands hit the good Lord take up. Get up, get down, cause he done change ya. Let me see those hands hit the good Lord save ya. Get up, get down, cause he done change ya. Yes, you do. I don't think this is working. Is this working? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I guess it's working. Uh, yeah, I always get cracked up watching the kids because some of them are really into it and other ones just look kind of afraid, like, what's happening? <laughs> I love it. I guess that's just like us, right? <laughs> well, can you imagine the day that Jesus comes in? I know. Y'all. Wave your palms. Really, we should be waving them all day, so keep them waving. Unless you got a bad one, like Steph's got a really bad one over there. It's not working right. <laughs> it's just kind of limp. We don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> wow. Um, so we have a whole lot going on this week. I am super Sorry. excited. I, I, I love, 
I love my pastor sister right here. <laughs> hey, Ooh. we held back a little bit. I'm not going to let him know what I said. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so here's the thing. I cannot wait for Thursday night in this room. Amen. Um, Thursday night is our big service that we do for modern that's called the mystery. And um, the mystery is something that is, um, I've studied it a long time, and it, 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 it's crazy to me when you, when you study that. But this is a night that we, we, we ask everyone to bring a friend, family member that's been afraid of church, mm-hmm. been hurt by the church, de-churched, unchurched, and we ask you to bring them that night. It's a really important night. Every song that is sung tells the story of Jesus, but it's secular music. And so Dolly Parton helps us, U2 helps us, Willie Nelson helps us, Um, Pink helps us, Um, Billie Eilish is helping us this year, Cher is helping us this year. So you want to come and and we tell the story through the perspective of the disciples Mm -hmm. and and what it was like. There's communion in the service, Mm -hmm. Um, there's hand washing in the service. It's just a beautiful night. Um, and bring a friend, bring someone with you, because this really is a service that is um, totally tailored for those that, that are afraid to walk through, because we get it. That's what Crosswalk is about, is mm-hmm. we know um, that it takes a lot of courage sometimes to walk into a place where you feel like you haven't been loved and you haven't been accepted. Right. Um, but here's what we all know is different, is we're changing that right here in this room. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So how many of y'all are planning to come Thursday night? Let's see a show of hands. Okay, look around. See anybody that didn't raise their hand? The ones of you raising your hands, go talk to them, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, let me just tell you a couple other announcements. Veronica, do we have the little handouts back there? If y'all will see Veronica on your way out, she has the little handouts that have all the Easter stuff because that's one of them, and that's the most important one we want y'all to come to. But there's other things, and it also has the Easter Sunday schedule. And looking ahead to Easter Sunday, are we at 10? What time are we on Easter Sunday? We're, we're still at 11. Okay, so never mind. You don't have to do anything special on Easter. But if you want to come early, there it starts with sunrise service. So get to the little schedule. Just take a look at it. But the other thing I really want to point out is after the mystery, go home, take a good sleep, but then come back at noon on Friday because then we have our Good Friday service. And Dee Dee and Rafe are both going to be in that. And it's going to be my one time I preach all year long. So... They give me the saddest day to preach. (laughs) But I love doing it because I'm the care pastor and I do a lot of grief and stuff like that. So I think it's a really important thing for us to look at on Friday too. So uh, please consider coming both of those times and then pick up a little brochure that will tell you about everything else because we've got stuff going all week. So that's just the two I wanted to highlight. And Joy's going to kill me if I don't say something about her class. Joy, will you raise your hand? That's Joy, and Joy is the chosen woman, (laughs) and today at 1230, we're starting the chosen noon class, the 1230 chosen class, and uh, you can pick up your lunch in the spire down the hall, and then just come right to the class, and they're going to be talking about all the episodes and how to get involved, and Joy has written the most amazing Bible study. I think this will be like the ninth, or we're getting up to like almost 10 different chosen Bible studies going on around this church. So if you haven't gotten involved in one, this is a great one for you to think about. And there's also going to be one in the Lake Highlands area that's starting after Easter. So if you're interested in doing an evening chosen class in the Lake Highlands area, see Joy about that too. So with all that said, I think that's all my announcements. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? That's it. You know what it's time for? You know what it's time for? Yeah, get your palms out and get some pictures with those palms. Social Sunday. <laughs> So say hi to somebody you know. But be sure and ask the person. Yes. If, they're, if they're new with us, yes. um, be sure and ask them if, you, if they don't want And if you don't want to be in a picture, just stay in your seat. Yep. Yep. And people come by and say hi. So yep. let's get ready. You guys ready on your mark? Get, get set, set. Go. go.
joining us online this morning. Let us know you're there. Put a like, put something, and let us know that you're there. You may not be with us here, but we feel your presence, and we're glad of that. Amen? The scripture this morning comes to us from John, the 12th chapter, starting in the 12th verse. And it says, The next day the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. John found a young donkey. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. 
At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that there had that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Jesus, as we take a moment and we remember what you did for us this week, how you took that walk in our place down the Via Dolorosa, you suffered such pain and such agony so that we could be saved from the laws and enter into grace. Grace where we could find help, where we could find mercy, where we could find goodness, where we could find love, where we could find redemption, where we can find a sense of belonging. God, we thank you today. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the sacrifice. Let us be that salt and light as we enter into the world and show the world that through you and a relationship with you that life is worth living. Jesus, we ask all of these things in your precious name. Amen. Oh, mountains, they're still being moved. And strongholds are still being loosed. Oh, God, we believe. And yes, we can see.
know that that move is not anything you and I can do, right? And it's not just the little C church, it's the big C church. We don't serve a different God from the same God that sent his son to walk that day where the whole crowd sang Hosanna, Hosanna in It's the same God that if you're sitting there today with depression and anxiety and worry and hurt and maybe you got the news that you did not want this week. Maybe you were in a place where you're like, I haven't told anyone, but God knows. We need a move. We need You know why? Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name, oh, Master, Savior. After oh, 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 Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim.
are still being moved. God, and strongholds are being loosed. And bodies raised. And giants being slain, God. We thank you for your presence in this place and for the miracles that you're doing in our midst. Father God, this morning especially, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Teach us what it means to be in sync with your Spirit. Just what it means to be listening for that still, small voice. God, we need to move, and we trust you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Eric, I want to be you when I grow up. keep my hair. Woo, take a deep breath in and out. Let the Holy Spirit just move for just a minute. We're not going to tell the Holy Spirit what to do in this room today. We come in this room because we don't need to check another box off on our, our to-do list. We come in this room because we want the power of God just to move. And it doesn't mean that the power of God can't move outside of this room. But what it does mean is that we have intentionally walked into this space and said, God, this is not about us. This is 100% about you. And it is an honor and it is a privilege, God, to bring glory and honor to you. And we take the time and the space to do that. See, worship is to him, not to me and you, and it's not about making us feel good. Although music brings it out in me. I'm an introvert, y'all know that. Put me in a corner and I have found my home. But when it comes to worship, I love to sing music that's not fiction, but it's real. That God will move and God will move for all of you. No one is left out of God moving in your life. When, when Jesus died, he didn't die for part of you. He died for all of you. And no one, no one, hear me say that whether you believe it or not, trust me, no one is left out of that. No one is left out. Oh, I cannot believe, y'all, that this is a week before Easter. It's kind of crazy. A lot can happen in the next seven days, and it does. It does. But today is the day it begins. Holy Week. And if you didn't grow up Methodist, which we all know in Crosswalk, we got our Pentecostals. Yes. We've got our Episcopals, we've got our Lutheran, you've got, I, I, I grew up Methodist, but I grew up in a shouting Methodist church. I didn't know some Methodist churches didn't do that. 
Did you know that you can shout while a pipe organ is being played? I'm just saying. You can do it. Saw it. What else do we have in here? We have Nazarene. Huh? Presbyterian. Catholic. Southern Baptist. Y'all do not boo. Do not do that. But let me tell you something. There is nothing like. We are not Methodists. We are United. Methodist. That's what we are in this room, and we are united together. And if you are uh, visiting with us today, we want you to know that everyone is welcome. You are not tolerated. You are loved, and you are accepted. Because that's what we believe God would have us to be. That's what we believe. And if anyone has ever told you any different, they're wrong. <laughs> but we are so happy that you are here and welcome. And we want to say thank you for being with us today. Through our Lenten series, Rhythms of Grace, we have been finding our rhythm together of sorts, right? Yeah. And it's a rhythm that, you know, when you're trying to find your rhythm, you have to slow down or speed up. Right? One or the other, wherever you are in your life, trying to find your rhythm. So what we have done is we have walked through what it means to walk through silence. For some of us, that was not easy. Solitude, Sabbath, simplicity, and slowing down. Every one of those sounded like a lot of work, didn't it? In our book that we have been reading from called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, it's a quick synopsis where it says this, the end isn't silence and solitude. It's to come back to God and our true selves. It isn't just Sabbath. It's a restful, grateful life of ease, appreciation, wonder, and worship. It isn't just simplicity. It's freedom and focus on what matters most. And it isn't just slowing down. It's to be present to God, to people, and to the moment. The goal being to practice, not perfection. Because if you expect perfection from your pastor, you are in trouble. In Jesus' name, I told y'all. Paul had his, I have mine. So how do we do this? How do we do this? How do we really walk in a way that is not just stirring our lives, but changing our lives? How do we do that? See, I can come up with pretty fluffy words all day long, but until we make the choice to say, God, I'm down for some change. Amen. I'm so glad, though, that you asked this question today. You get the joke. Because today is about working to get in sync with the Holy Spirit. And how do we do that? How do we begin to understand what that means in order really to understand what it means to slow down and have Sabbath and find our rhythm. How do I begin that change? And, and part of that change comes when we sync with the Holy Spirit. And I know what some of you will say. I don't know when the Holy Spirit speaks. I don't know when the Holy Spirit is moving. And I think we do. I just don't think we have learned yet how to acknowledge that. But, but hear me, just like Jesus didn't die for a few of you, Jesus died for all of you, the Holy Spirit doesn't just speak to a few of you. The Holy Spirit speaks to all of us. Amen. So some ask, what does the triumphal entry and syncing up with the Holy Spirit have to do with anything? And my answer to that is everything. 
You see, I believe every one of us can hear the voice of God if we stop and we listen. Today's story is literally the beginning of the end. As Robbie read our scripture today, it is kind of the salt and the pepper of the, of the Holy Spirit already speaking throughout this entire story. A story that is also our story as well. This story was written for every single person in the room. And this story is a story that for many of us, we have heard it a thousand times. We all know what the palm branches are. We already know that Jesus rides in on a donkey. We know all of these things. Yes, Jesus did that. The crowd yelled and sang Hosanna and Hosanna in the highest. This was a measure, though, that was meant for a king. This was a measure that was meant for a king. And what we know is that the very next day, Jesus will be arrested for a crime that he did not commit. Here's what I will say to you on that. Just a side note before I go on. If you think bias and church hurt is a new thing, read the story of Jesus. If anyone had a right to be hurt at the church, it was Jesus. But Jesus came to change that direction, and that direction he did. That's my side note. Throughout this entire story, there are so many elements for me that when I, when I, when I read this, I feel like I see the Holy Spirit working. So here's a little, bit, a little bit of a background of where we begin. We know that the chief priests and the Pharisees have already decided to kill Jesus. These are church people. These are church people. And they think they're doing the right thing. Because Jesus is drawing crowds because Jesus is healing the sick, he is raising the dead, he raises his best friend Lazarus, and oh my goodness, they need to eliminate the living evidence of the sign that Jesus, and of Jesus' miracles. They need to get rid of that, and in a hurry. So the word is out that the religious authorities are looking for Jesus. For Jesus to show up would be a direct in your face challenge to their authority and the buzz on the street is Jesus is coming this is where we have to stop and we do pause because this is where the beginning of a new day happens because here is what Jesus does next Jesus comes seated on a donkey, not riding, a mounted war chariot or horse. Jesus comes humbly, lovingly, and knowing what his future holds. This isn't the first time, though, that we have seen this humbleness and the love that has been shown. Because not many weeks ago, we remembered his birth in a dirty manger with dirty animals. A place that isn't fit for a king, and yet it is where the king of kings was born. So coming in on a donkey is no exception. Riding into the streets of Jerusalem, saying, I just, just want them to know I'm here. I know what's coming. And yet Jesus knew, he knew more than we could know. <laughs> That's the part that always goes through my mind in this. He was methodical, and he had no preconceived notion that he would come out of this alive. Quite the opposite. Jesus knew that it was time, that this earthly time that he had come for was coming to an end and soon. But yet, he does it anyway. That right there is the very narrative 
of why we stop, Don. Why we pause. Why we slow down. Why we stop to remember what this life is about. What this life means. Why hurry is so hard, not only on the human body, but you can't hurry and be worried and worship at the same time. One of them's got to give. And why is that? It's because when Jesus knew he was going to die, he did it anyway. He did it anyway. I don't know about you, but that anyway word gets me every time because Pastor Didi could not do it anyway. Jesus' love is richer than just words. We can all speak words that say, I love you, but Jesus took action to a whole new level. Jesus changed the narrative of this journey and of this life for all of us. And it was a narrative that not everyone knew needed to be changed. So therefore, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are ready for him to go. But they didn't know they were playing right into the narrative of what needed to happen. As our kids walked in today with palm branches waving Hosanna, my question for us would be, does my life shout Hosanna every day? God did not help me on that one. See, when I pause and I stop, I slow down, and I think about the love of God, Do I understand that my life is also supposed to reflect Hosanna? If it doesn't, why not? The Holy Spirit did not quit working at the end of Holy Week. And as a matter of fact, I believe the Holy Spirit kicked into overdrive. Jesus rode in that day on a donkey knowing he may be the king of the Jews, but someone had to be the ultimate sacrifice. And the only one that could do so was Jesus. So this story is not just another story. This story is a story that is unlike any other story that we will ever read. This is a story that is for you and for me. No one is left out of this story, and Jesus made sure of it. So when people see us, what do they see? Do they see someone whose life says, I don't have it all together, but I will shout Hosanna anyway because I know Jesus did this for me. And every day I choose to walk by faith and not by sight. Am I doing that? Am I doing that? No one can do that for us. When we get rid of the hurry, do they look at you and go, oh, I'm not asking them how they're doing because they're going to tell me. (laughs) I mean, let's be real. Are, Are there those people that you look them up because you know When you ask them how they are doing, they're going to look at you and say, you know what, it has not been easy, but it has been worth it. I'm not asking for phony, but what I am saying is, is something changes when you quit worrying and you quit complaining and you quit hurrying and you say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. There's something that happens When Jeff and I got married, I don't know, if, where are you, honey? Are you in the room? There he is, okay. We both agreed we had to live out our calling. Now, that may seem really simple to you, but if you understand that it's not one of us living into our call, it is both of us. And, and he was in Perkins um, when we got married, and it was a lot. It has not always been easy. There have been 
times in our 20 years, I cannot believe it's almost 20 years, babe. Yeah. He's put up with me, y'all, for 20 years. But there have been times in our, in, in our marriage, and I, and, and I was thinking about that. Because I'll be honest with you, when God called me to pastoral ministry, I was like, oh, no, mm -mm. I know church people. I know church people. But if I didn't step in and be the change that I wanted to see, then I'm no different. See, and sometimes in our lives, we want to see change, but we don't want to be the help that makes the change. But Jesus did. Jesus needed to see change. And so Jesus said, it's going to begin with me. I'm going to bring the change and I'm going to begin to preach it. And I'm going to begin to bring it to everyone to be the change. See, sometimes if you want to see change, you've got to be the change. Well, I didn't want to be the change. My I don't want to took, took precedence for a really long time. And let me tell you this part. And this is why I'm sharing this with you. When you live into a place where you're not living into your call, you are miserable. You can have the largest bank account you want. You can have everything you want, the prettiest home, the prettiest cars. You can have it all and be miserable because that's me. That was me. I did not want to face my DS. I did not want to face my bishop. I didn't want to do any of that and say, hey, guess what? Yes, this purple-haired woman wants to be a pastor because I feel like God called me to do that. I don't want to do that. Jeff, he left corporate America. I left the music business. Jeff didn't want to leave a corporate job that paid a lot of money and go, hey, let me go and deal with the complaints. Let me go and deal with all the things that churches are. And then I sit back and I go, here we are. And I wouldn't trade it because I wouldn't get to know any of you. I wouldn't get to know any of you where you have allowed us to be a part of your life and share this journey. And Crosswalk is being the change that we want to see. I think, too, Jeff would be honest with me. I think there were moments in our lives where we shouted Hosanna really loud, and then there were moments in our lives where we went, ooh, squeak over in the corner. <laughs> living by faith, living into a place where you can lay things down that seem overwhelming, things that seem hard, things that seem like you don't understand and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let go and I'm going to slow down and I'm going to allow God to move, takes courage, takes bravery, takes wisdom. But it also takes us being obedient and listening to the Holy Spirit. See, I'm also learning that if I can look back on those times that I didn't listen like I should, hopefully I learn from those mistakes and I move forward and I listen a little better the next time. As I close today, I want to ask you this. Again, are you letting your life speak Hosanna? Are you letting your life be an example of Hosanna? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to speak into your life? And if you sit back and you go, Pastor, I don't know what that means. That's okay. I get that. But here's what I want you to know. There's not a formula to that. And you're not going to understand it until you get into a place where you stop Maybe it's listening to worship, or maybe it's working out, or maybe it's reading your Bible or praying. I don't know what that is for you, but I promise you, when you just shut the world out and you begin to just sit and reflect, you will hear the still, small voice of God speak. God just 
doesn't leave anybody out of that. There's room for everyone. And did you know that God can speak to multiple people at the same time? Are you shouting Hosanna in your home? Are you shouting Hosanna in your work? Are you shouting Hosanna with your friendships? Are you shouting Hosanna with your relationships? Are you shouting Hosanna in the hallways of this church? Are you shouting Hosanna in the parking lots? Are you shouting Hosanna in the restaurant where people see you and they go, I don't know what they got, but I need some of that. Are you shouting Hosanna? As we walk into this holy week, we all know what is to come this week. Thursday, we will be reminded of the Last Supper. And, you know, when you have one day left to live, what do you do? We would have a list. But you know what Jesus does? He washes feet. He washes feet. And then he says, don't worry. Jesus, again, is taking care of everybody in the room. Do this in remembrance of me. Because I will never leave you and I will never forsake you and you will never be without me and I want you to remember this. And then he lives up to what he says he will do and he brings death. Which is the only thing he could do. And if you think that's what he wants to do, then you need to read the story where he says, hey God, if anything else can happen here, please take this away from me. But guys, sometimes life feels like Friday, but then Sunday's coming. Did you hear me? Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. We get to live through that this week. And every step of the way, we get to remember Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. May we walk this week in a way that becomes a habit for the rest of our life and saying, I don't care if I got cut off in the middle of the highway or cut off in the grocery store. Hosanna. I'm going to say Hosanna anyway. Maybe that person gave me a dirty look. Maybe that person doesn't like who I love. Maybe that person doesn't like that I have a female pastor. Hosanna. Hosanna! And may we pause and let go of the hurry and let our lives shout. Amen.
Crosswalk. This is your opportunity to shout Hosanna through your giving to the church. Your gifts make it possible for us to do this. Your gifts make it possible for us to be here and to serve other people and to invite them to be a part of what you guys have discovered in God's love through through this church. So I invite you to consider how you might support the ministries of this church. Uh, We have a plate at the back. You can give online. You can uh, uh, send it by envelope. Uh, So will you pray with me? Uh, Gracious God, we thank you for this place. We thank you for these people. We thank you for the opportunity to shout our praise to you. God, we love you. We know where this week's going, but we also know where it ends. God, we want to be a part of that story and telling that story to the rest of the world. Thank you for that opportunity. In your son's name we pray. Amen. with us please don't leave without your special gift in the bag and letting us know you were here I promise we don't do anything strange you're here for me but what we do want you to know is that you are loved and that you matter you matter you matter to us amen amen, amen. all right let me see who's gonna walk out with me today Bob Baker, walk out with me today. We all love Bob Baker. He's our host with the mostest, right? All right, you ready? Ready. All right, God bless you. We love you online. Thank you for being with us as well. Thank you. God bless everybody.